In this video, we're going to look at binary covalent nomenclature. Think about what the word binary means. The bi part means two. So for covalent nomenclatures, I'm only going to expect you to be able to name covalent compounds with two elements in them, okay? Now, when you get to this section of nomenclature, I know ionic is really challenging. Covalent is pretty straightforward. So let's go through the rules. First of all, we're going to use some Greek prefixes. You may be familiar with some of these. For one, we use mono. For two, we use di. For three, we use tri. For four, tetra. If you ever heard of the game Tetris, you have to get four little blocks uh, in a row or in a little pattern. and They come down, you have to get them to fill up, and when you get four lines, that's a Tetris. Penta is five, so think about geometry pentagons. Uh, there's a flow chart that you'll have in class that will uh, have all these written on there, but I would suggest writing them in your notes. You're going to need to memorize these. Six is hexa, so again, geometry hexagon. Seven is hepta. Eight is octa. Nine is nona. And ten is deca. So make sure that you work on starting to memorize those. All right, so here are the rules. The first thing we do is tell how many atoms of the first element there are with a Greek prefix. If there's only one of that atom, then we omit the mono. So you never use mono, but you use di through deca on that first element. Then you name the first element. Uh, you give the actual uh, name of that element. Then the next thing that we do is tell how many atoms of the second element there are and we use a Greek prefix whether there's one or ten all the way through. You use all prefix on every one. And then name the second element, but we change the end of the name to IDE, which is kind of like what we did in the ionic compounds. We changed the end of the element name to IDE, so chlorine becomes chloride, sulfur becomes sulfide, and so on. All right, there are a few exceptions, and I will expect you to know these, so make sure that you memorize them. The first one, if you look at it, you would expect it to be dihydrogen monoxide, two hydrogens and one oxygen. But we call it water. Hopefully you guys recognize that. Here's another one. This should be nitrogen trihydride, no mono on the first element, but we call it ammonia. Another one is CH4, that should be carbon tetrahydride, but we actually call it methane, and you've probably heard of that. And then there's HCl, and that should be hydrogen monochloride, but we just call it hydrogen chloride instead. So make sure you know those four exceptions. They are also on your flowchart in class. All right, so let's do some practice. Make sure that you pause after each example and try to figure it out yourself and then check to see what you may have gotten wrong. Here's the first one. Pause and try it. This is dinitrogen tetroxide. And you can see over to the right where it says tetroxide, that is how it should be written. If you put tetraoxide, I won't penalize you for that. Uh, when you have a prefix that ends in an A and it goes with an element that starts with an O, something like uh, tetraoxide, we make it tetroxide. All right, PCL3, try this one. This one is phosphorus trichloride. Now the trick there is to remember not to use a mono on the first element. Try this one. Sulfur dioxide. Again, no mono on that first element. Don't forget to change that second element to an ending of IDE. Let's try a few more. All right, here's CO. Carbon monoxide. Now, again, this would be monooxide, so it, the prefix ends with O, 
and the element starts with O, it would actually be Manukside if you put both O's in there, which is kind of odd. So we just drop one of the O's. If you write down monooxide, I'm not going to take away credit for you uh, for that. Try this one, P4O10. Tetraphosphorus decoxide. So again, decaoxide would be decoxide. Let's try one more. NH3. I hope you recognize that that was one of the exceptions. That's ammonia. We're going to do some more practice with this in class. I know it seems a lot easier than the ionic nomenclature, which is the good news. The bad news is you're going to start getting compounds with both types of nomenclature together. And so we're going to have to start learning how to tell them apart and then use the correct nomenclature system. I'll see you in class.